Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is Hannah's Books. I've just returned from a few weeks in South Carolina, where my family is from, where I spent some time caring for my mother, who entered hospice a few weeks ago and recently died. I'm so glad to have been able to be with her through her last days and moments, including feeding her mashed pears, which she had fed me when I was little, and rubbing her feet with lotion and holding hands with her one afternoon while we both napped. I will miss her very much. I'm also glad that I was able to spend some time after she died with my brother, who has been her full-time caregiver for many years. While I was down, I also got to see my uncle a bit, and a couple of cousins of various sorts, and an old high school friend who has recently returned to the area to take care of his own parent. Rekindling that friendship a bit over the past few months has brought me a lot of joy. And of course, reading all of your beautiful comments on my last video, announcing that I was going to be off booktube for a while, was incredible. I am perpetually stunned by what an amazing community I've fallen into when I see how you support me, but also when I read what you say to other booktubers, either in comments or even in videos. I sometimes refer to all of y'all as my, quote, imaginary friends, but that just isn't true. You're real friends. Thank you. Well, let me go back for a second and say that my video today was inspired by the wonderful videos made by many other booktubers, inspired by the amazing Gina Stanier, who brought the whole What's Cheering Me Up Right Now tag or theme to booktube. I'll leave a link to her channel down below in this description box, as well as a link to my previous version of this tag, one that I actually rewatch pretty frequently because it includes some video footage of my husband David singing a duet with a friend. Well, as I said, I was bolstered and cheered up by friends and family at a time when I was struggling a bit. I was, of course, sad that my mother died. In addition, it was intense to go through hospice caregiving a second time in a year, and perhaps especially to watch my mother die of breast cancer, a disease we shared. Hardest, and maybe also the best thing, was how present David seemed to me the entire time. I was constantly flooded with memories of him, how kind he was to my grandmother when she was dying decades ago, how much he taught me about being a caregiver as well as about receiving care as graciously and appreciatively as possible, about the times we spent together in South Carolina, taking long walks along the beach every morning and often in the evening as well. After Mama died, I made it a point to walk down to the beach, maybe a five-minute walk from her house, for a long stroll each day before my brother woke up. I loved watching the ocean waves roll in, watching the birds. and also watching other folks out for morning strolls and even games of frisbee. I was too shy to record much without permission, but here's a quick little sample. On many mornings after my walk, I stopped by the Just Off the Beach Cafe, bought a cup of coffee, and sat at the outdoor patio to listen to the ocean and do some reading. It was always glorious, and the weather seemed perfect almost every day. When I left my home in the D.C. area, spring was just beginning, but in South Carolina, it was already in full bloom. My mother and brother lived in what was originally my grandmother's house. Granny was a wonderful gardener of both vegetables and flowers, and it was wonderful to be greeted with the fruits of her labor, even after all these years. When I arrived back home, spring was in full force here, too, in the D.C. area. 
My yard seems covered in daffodils, even after I cut many of them to fill vases inside. The purple-leaved plum tree in the front yard has set out its first still green leaf buds. And DC's famous cherry blossoms have just peaked, and I'm heading down to see them tomorrow, I think. This afternoon, I'm planning to go for a walk with a friend, possibly along the creek that runs through our neighborhood. The weather is a little chillier than it was when I was down south, but still, the days are long and the sun is shining. Spring always means something else, something a bit less joyful in the United States, and that is filing taxes. I'm thrilled to have finished all of that paperwork yesterday, giving me time for both other responsibilities, but also other things that bring me joy. In addition to time outdoors, I've done a lot of reading, something that always makes me happy, even when I wind up not actually loving the books I'm reading. But right now, I'm being pretty lucky on that front. After completing a set of books I read as the judge of a regional book prize, books I sadly cannot talk about here, I have turned to a mystery with a literary detective, some poetry by one of my favorite poets, as well as biographies and letters of that poet, a terrific cookbook, perfect for reading more or less like a novel, a lovely book about a young man exploring his family's history, etc. More on all of these sometime soon. And of course, Booktube always cheers me up. I'm just starting to do some real catch up on your videos that I mostly missed while I was away. I might just start fresh in my eternal effort to keep up. So if you made a particular video that you think I personally really need to see, I would appreciate it if you would flag it for me, either down in the comments or by Voxer or email. And lastly, while I was gone, I crossed the 4,000 subscriber mark. This is just stunningly weird to me, but really lovely. Although in the past, I've had a tradition of doing Q&As on my booktube anniversary instead of in celebration of subscriber milestones, mostly to keep me from focusing on that number or thinking it matters in any way. I think I'll violate that tradition this time, though. I'll put out a call for questions in a day or two. Thank you all for being here. It means a lot to me. See you soon here on Hannah's Books. Thank you.